Stern's masterpiece is uh, The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy, Gentlemen. As we can see from the very title of this novel, this unconventional novel, uh, it's not just about Tristram's life, but also about his opinions. And we should say better, not only Tristram's uh, opinions, impressions, feelings, point of view, but also the rest of the characters. Let's look at the list of the characters. Tristram, Walter and Elizabeth, that is, his parents, Toby, his uncle, plus two other points of view, the narrator's point of view, and the author's himself wants to say something about his writing technique. Um, this work is a nine-volume work, nine volumes, so a very, very long work, written over ten years, from 1759 to 1769. Let's look at the name of the main character, Tristram Shandy. There's a symbolic meaning in Tristram, which comes from the Latin word tristis, and shandy, which means strange, weird, a bit daft. And in fact, all the characters seem to be um, weird, uh, almost crazy. They always fail to communicate to each other. There are serious problems in communication. Um, which reminds us of Francis Bacon's theory of idola. Bacon was the first to um, investigate the communicating problems between a man and another man. Words can be a problem when they are misunderstood, and misunderstandings are there everywhere in this novel, in this very long novel. But why is it so long? Because the events cover a very short length of time, just 24 hours. How come that 24 hours are dilated in such a long work, in a nine volume work? Because each event is narrated from various points of view. So every character has to say something about what happens. But not only does each character say what he thinks, but also what he feels, his impressions, and opens up uh, uh, long digressions uh, according to what John Locke said. John Locke is the father of empiricism, of English empiricism, which is a philosophical way of looking at reality, which is not based on uh, ideas, um, this is what rationalists said, but based on uh, the observation of reality. According to John Locke, our mind works like this. Every time I get the impression of something coming from the outside world, my, my brain, my unconscious, starts working and other ideas are connected to the first one. And these ideas are connected freely, so I can move back and forward in the past. Um, something might happen which reminds me of something uh, which had happened 10 years before, 20 years before. So in the, in the work, in uh, Shandy's uh, opinions, we find uh, very old facts such as the, the episode of when his father and his mother um, had a sexual uh, relationship, uh, had a sexual uh, uh, encounter, but this, this episode uh, uh, turns out to be very funny because right while they were having sex, uh, Tristram's mother asks um, her husband, uh, 
have you remembered to wind the clock, which is a very weird question, while you're having sex with, uh, with a man, with a woman? Why is Tristram saying this? Because he wants us to know that uh, when his parents conceived him, uh, gave life to him, they forgot a very important ingredient, love. So Tristram has not come to this word loved, wanted. He is almost an accident. That's why his name is Tristis, Tristram. His life must be sad. He's going to be sad because his parents didn't put any kind of love into him. Another thing. Uh, the magnification, the dilatation of uh, the writing is caused by the long digressions. Each character, the, the narrator and the author say something. Uh, please note that the narrator and the author are distinct. Sometimes Stern speaks like, speaks as if he is the narrator. Other times, he really speaks as the author. So he opens up some digressions about his uh, writing technique, the reason why he is uh, writing something instead of something else, why he um, opens such long digressions, and so on. Another thing is the logical and chronological order. There is no order. That's why this work is uh, sometimes defined as order in disorder. Because although the structure may seem so ordered, nine volumes um, in the form of a novel, but there's a lot of disorder caused by the very, the many points of view. The fact that each character says something freely. So all we get is a long stream of consciousness. A sort of long interior monologues performed by each character. And we never really understand what happens really. We only get impressions, feelings, which is something that James Joyce will imitate in his masterpiece, Ulysses. Now we should have a closer look at uh, the three main characters uh, in uh, the life and opinions of Tristram Shandy, gentlemen. That is, Tristram himself, his father, Walter Shandy, and his uncle, Uncle Toby. Let's start from his father, Walter Shandy. He had high expectations for his son. And in fact, he wanted to give him the majestic name of Trismegistus, which comes from the name of an ancient god. Hermes Trismegistus, which means three times great. And he was the god who protected communication. So let's start from here. Three times great, the name of a god, the god of communication. If we look at the keywords, we'll find out that communication, misunderstandings, are two of the most important themes in this novel. Then, Walter Shandy was obsessed with uh, names, and in fact this name was very ambitious, Trismegistus, but when Tristan was born the name was misspelled, and from Trismegistus it became Tristram, which is quite the opposite. While Trismegistus means three times great, Tristram seems to be associated to a Latin adjective, tristis, indicating that his life 
will very probably be a miserable one. Another obsession of Walter Shandis was with noses, but accidentally a doctor harmed Tristram's nose before he was born. This will disappoint Walter, because as soon as he sees his baby with a bad nose, he will try to flatter it, so to modify his son's nose, another expectations, another expectation gone bad. Another obsession he had was about predestination. But the trivial accident which occurred to Tristram, to his son, seemed to predict that Tristram will have quite a miserable life. In fact, first of all, before he was born, Walter and his wife uh, did not get on well. Their marriage was quite unhappy. And even their sexual encounters were uh, automatic, were without love. They only had sex as a habit. Every first day of each month, Walter wound the clock and had sex with his wife but not because he desired her physically. Least of all, he wanted to have a son. The first ingredient that two parents should put in a baby is love. No love was put as an ingredient when Tristram's parents thought of giving life to a baby. So that's another reason why Tristram's life will be miserable, sad, unhappy. Another very funny, we may say, trivial accident was that he was accidentally circumcised by a window. This seems to be very funny, but actually it's another clue, another reason why Tristram's father will be more and more convinced that he has given life to a failure. His son will never be a fulfilled, happy, successful son. So he's, he, is, he couldn't be further from predestination. He is nothing like the usual characters we have learned. Mol Flanders, Robinson, Pamela, they all might have started from bad conditions, bad living conditions, but they all end up becoming rich and successful people. This will not happen to Tristram. Let's look at Uncle Toby. Um, he was obsessed with uh, uh, an accident he suffered while he was uh, fighting in uh, a war, in a battle. He was wounded in his lower parts. Uh, and this will become an obsession because this accident has made him sexually unable. He meets other women, but he never is able to have a sexual encounter with them. This becomes his obsession. Let's look at this word, obsession. It seems to be a key word in this novel, but because it was a key word for John Locke, the father of empiricism. John Locke theorized the free association of ideas that is the power of a man's mind to freely associate ideas. But another thing he thought of was the so-called hobby horses. A hobby horse is uh, something which runs through a man's mind over and over. When a man keeps thinking of the same thing, he has a one-track mind when a man only thinks of something. And this becomes his obsession. Both Walter and Tristram, but I should say, and Uncle Toby, are all obsessed 
in this case, with this physical damage they have got, the nose, the lower parts, this seems to be one obsession. But shattered expectations also represent a big thing in this novel. Because Walter Shandy is completely disappointed when he looked at his son and what he has become when he was born. He is not what he expected his son to be. So all the three characters have one thing in common. They are miserable. They hoped, they dreamt of something. They dreamt of having a big life, but they will all be disappointed. So this novel has another important feature. It is the opposite of uh, what the other 18th century novels represented. That is uh, a sort of manifesto of Protestant ethics and predestination.